This is the stacked TKL. It is a solder only south facing board made out of acrylic sheets. It has an extra key in the function row and was fun to build. While I was doing a build video, I noticed that there was backlight support on the PCB for single color LEDs. So I felt determined to add backlighting. If you'd like to see a build video on the stacked TKL, the link is in the top right. I bought some two millimeter LEDs from Amazon after finding that three millimeter LEDs cause way too much interference. These tiny LEDs are the perfect height to not interfere with GMK keycaps. I chose the amber orange version, but there were several others to choose from, including yellow, green, blue, purple, red, warm white, and clear white. After dismantling the board, being careful not to get fingerprints on the acrylic, I began the lengthy process of soldering the LEDs into place. If you are following this process, generally the longer leg of the LEDs is the positive end and the circle on the PCB is the positive terminal. With a little bit of force and a pair of pliers, I noticed that the LEDs actually pop into place with these Gateron switches. After getting an entire row properly seated, I would solder the whole row and cut off the excess. Once the whole board was soldered, I tried to get the backlight to turn on and well, it didn't work. After doing some digging, I found out that my socket for my pause key stopped working. So I decided to reflash my board. Firmware is the software that runs on specific computer chips. Different microprocessors have different architectures that support different numbers of wires. Each firmware is specific to each processor and wiring architecture. Flashing your keyboard is the process of reprogramming the keyboard's microprocessor, so it knows which wires do what. QMK is an open source development community based around developing input devices. A program called QMK can take what you define a keyboard to be and convert it through a process called compilation into machine level code, which is the code that is understood by the processing chip on your keyboard. A program that is curated by the QMK community called the QMK Toolbox is a graphical user interface that allows you to actually send the compiled code to your keyboard and reflash it with a different set of instructions. Keyboards use these instructions to translate a key press signal into a signal that your computer can understand. VIA is a separate open source program that is built on the QMK framework. It allows for real-time changes of those commands so you don't have to recompile and reflash your keyboard every time you want to make a change to what each key does. I downloaded VIA by typing in download VIA, going through the official website to the GitHub page and downloading the Windows executable. If your board is VIA compatible and flashed already, it allows you to remap keys on the fly. This board comes pre-flashed, but something was going wrong. So I downloaded the QMK toolbox by searching for QMK toolbox, going to the releases section and downloading the executable. It prompted me to install drivers, which I did, and the board was recognized. Now to reflash the board. Although you can compile your own firmware using QMK, many times the community has done it for you. VIA has a repository of pre-compiled firmware. I downloaded the firmware in the form of a hex file for the stacked TKL from VIA's official site. While running QMK toolbox, I plugged in the board selected the firmware I downloaded from VIA, reset the board using the built-in reset macro, and flashed the firmware onto the keyboard. There's also a little reset button that you can press on the bottom of the board. Once it was finished flashing, I unplugged the board and plugged it back in, and the backlight started working, but the brightness wasn't increasing. 
After finding out in VIA that my pause break key was broken, I moved the command to the arrow keys. The key might have just been broken the entire time, but there could have also been a Boolean variable that sets the initial brightness. I did have to hotwire my key to work again, but now it works. I do suggest doing this if you do a bit of coding or typing in the dark because the LEDs are really close to the keycaps and it shines through really well. You may want to pick up some side printed legends like these ones from Idabao. The cost of adding these LEDs was only $21, which is expensive for LEDs, but it really is worth it to have perfectly flush and well executed backlighting. If you are curious about building mechanical keyboards and enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification for more keyboard related content. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.